A very good morning and welcome to the breakfast meeting. Kitui Flo is my name. Now, as a woman, the conversation we're having today is very personal to me. But as a Ugandan and as anybody, every single one of us has been affected either directly or indirectly by cancer, specifically breast cancer. Today we're having a conversation about that and what you need to know about early detection and everything you can do to help yourself in this regard. And joining me to have this conversation uh, from CK International Hospital of Kampala, Dr. Alicia Datia. Welcome and good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Dr. Alicia is an oncologist and a palliative care fellow as well as a cancer pain management expert and of course like I already said earlier she is working with Sea Care International Hospital of Kampala. We're very glad to have you this morning. The conversation we're having is, is a bit of a, uh, a heavy one. It's mm -hmm. a bit of a heavy one especially for us women because this affects us directly. Yes. Let's talk about the statistics of cancer especially breast cancer here in Uganda. How bad is the situation? Well, like rightfully you said, breast cancer is a very sensitive topic and mm. uh, a lot of women are being affected. But as a snapshot just in Uganda, breast cancer is the second most common cancer affecting women yeah. and the first is cervical cancer. So if we look at the data over the last couple of years, especially 2020 uh, by the International Agency of Research, it actually showed that approximately 2,600 women are diagnosed with breast cancer annually. Yeah. And from that 2,600, 1,300 die from that disease, which basically means that 50% of women diagnosed to breast cancer are lost to breast lives. cancer yeah. in Uganda. Yeah. That's, that's huge. That is a that's huge, huge but I'm sure there's a reason why a lot of these women who are diagnosed end up dying from it. Mm -hmm. Because I'd have reason to believe that there are those who actually survive. Breast cancer isn't always fatal, is it? Correct. The most important thing is that early detection. When a woman is actually diagnosed at earlier stages, curation is more effective. However, according to the UWASACO, which is the Ugandan Women Association for Breast Cancer Research, has shown us that 89% of women actually who come to the hospital are at stage 3 and stage 4. It's so we are, it's too late. So what we're missing out is the stage one and the stage two. And there's several reasons why we're actually missing out on this crucial number and unable to save women's lives. Okay, so let's talk about early detection. Now, normally I had assumed that a lot of women go to the hospital, seek uh, medical help when they feel something. But I have reason to believe that you can actually check before Correct. you ever feel anything. Correct. How do you do this um, early detection? How does one check for breast cancer? How often should they check? Should I just randomly run to the hospital every two weeks and, and say, check me now? Yeah, that's a very nice question, to be honest. And let me, let's, let's start with this, that in the equatorial band, which is the East African band, we tend to see breast cancer affecting younger women as well. Although breast cancer is more prevalent in the women above the age of 50s, in our setting, we see women it's who are at 20s, situation. 30s, mm. and 40s, and we're actually seeing more of that now. So when do we start screening? It is advised that when women are above the age of 25, so 25 and above, at least start getting familiar with your breasts. By this time, we know that a woman is wise, is mature, and her breasts are fully grown. So we start with a self-breast exam. A okay. self-breast exam is an exam that you do it at home, literally five minutes, a three-step examination that I can go through with, and women are supposed to start that. Okay. When is it done? It's supposed to be done every month, seven to 10 days after your menstrual period. This is because when a woman is premenstrual or on her menstruation, the breasts are more distended, they're more painful, yeah. and you're more likely to fill your tissue than any other mass, and yeah. that causes a lot of panic. So if we adhere to there the timeline, there could time be a misunderstanding. Then, correct. Yeah. Then we're able to know our breasts a lot more. So you see what happens is if you start at 25, mm. and when you are at 30, you know your breasts a lot more compared to me. So when you come into my clinic, you're able to tell me, hey, this was this not there. This feels different. This mm. was not there. There is something in there. So that's the first thing. But more importantly, how is a self-breast exam done? It's a three-way step. Yeah. First thing is that You've got to remove all your clothes and you have to look at yourself in the mirror. You have to look at your breasts when you have to put your hands above both your hands okay. and you have to put both your hands on your hips. All right. So when you look at the breasts, you're looking at the size of your breasts. Are both the sizes similar? You're looking at symmetry. Is one actually inverted? Is there um, a dimple on the other one? You're looking at the shape of it. Has one become obviously larger? You're looking at the skin of it. 
Is there any redness? Is there any pluckering? Does the skin look like a skin of an orange? Is there a dimple in it? Majority of the women say, hey, I have a dimple, that's something good, but it's actually not good. It actually means there is a mass inside the breast that's pulling the skin inside. Mm. So once you have seen that the breast, how the breast looks, you don't also forget seeing the nipples. Are the nipples both facing forward? Is one inverted? Is it retracted? Then comes to the next step, which is palpation, which is feeling. Ideally, we use three fingers and we use the middle portion of the three fingers. We don't use the tips, we don't use the, the end, bottom. and we definitely mm. do not use the palm. Okay. The three fingers have to be very closely uh, tied together, okay. not like this. Okay. So there are ways where you can begin or mm. the ways you can palpate. You could go circular motion or you could go a vertical motion. Okay. Or you could actually mix method. I prefer the circular motion because that's how I've been used to it and it's actually easier. Mm. So what you do is you begin from out, moving in. So you go palpate the whole breast, outward, moving in, without taking your hand out of the breast. Okay. Please note that when we do that, there could be a chance that there is a mass. And when you do this, it's it actually slipped or it's moved else. or you mm. lose it. Complete the examination in the breast and you come to the nipple now. With your thumb and your index finger, gently squeeze it to see if there is discharge. Breast cancer typically comes with a bloody nipple discharge. Now, 90% of women stop there. Here is the trick. You actually move in the middle of the chest where we find the intramammary nodes. You examine the area here. Do you feel any nodes? And you complete the examination. This is right down the middle. Correct, in the Got middle. Mm. And then you complete the examination going into the armpit, what we call the axilla. And we actually raise your hand, we put your hand in here, you can use four hands, and you gently feel if you see any masses. You put your hand down to see whether you actually feel any masses. And finally, the collarbone. You actually also the palpate. The collarbone? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Why? Because all of this area is breast tissue. Got it. Now, majority of the women do present with a lump in the breast, but there are some women who actually just present with a mass in the armpit. Okay. and that is breast cancer. So once that's done, you repeat the same steps to the next breast and that's it. Observe, palpate, repeat. Okay, okay, that's, that's very interesting because I think, I think we all know we should do this, but we've never really understood the technique of how to do it. I'm glad that you broke that down very effectively. Now, one of the things that you mentioned is now we're seeing breast cancer um, appearing a lot more in younger ages hmm. of, 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 you know, as opposed to what is expected in other parts of the region. So at what age should I go check for breast cancer? Okay, so once you've started the self-breast exam, which is at 25, now you're already used to it. The second step comes in is a clinical breast exam. Okay. A clinical breast exam is when the doctor or the healthcare provider actually performs the exam on you. And this is whether or not I feel anything weird? Correct. Okay. See, whether or not when you feel something, it's actually called screening. But if you feel something and come to the doctor, then that's diagnosis. Okay. So we're here focusing mainly on screening, so I expect women to actually be asymptomatic. Again, you know, when we're screening, I'll just, uh, just an FYI, when masses are less than one centimeter, you are unable to feel it with your hands. Okay. So a coupled screening, which is a clinical breast exam plus an imaging modality, whether that's an ultrasound breast, depending on your age, or a mammogram. So an ultrasound is done for women under the age of 40, okay. and a mammogram is done for women above the age of 40. So when we couple those two, we are more likely to see and to diagnose better than just a clinical breast exam. Yeah. Now let's say that you have come to me and you tell me that you would like to get your breast exam. So we as a doctor or a healthcare provider, we actually look at your risk, risk factors. Do you have a family history? Um, what is your age? Do you have any comorbids? Do you smoke? Do you drink alcohol? What age did you get your menstrual period? Are you at menopause? Do you use oral contraceptive pills and for how long have you used it? Do you use hormone replacement therapy? Do you exercise? How is your diet? So all of these are risk factors that can predispose you to breast cancer. Again, the age of when you gave birth, have you breastfed? So if the answers are, for example, the negative ones have a yes, yes, then we actually start screening you earlier than a woman that has no a no, no. Yeah. And ideally, a woman should begin screening at the age of 40. But what is really important in the East African band is that screening is personalized to you. We tailor the screening so that we're able to detect cancer early. Okay. Another thing that we talked about is the fact that a lot of women 
come for diagnosis when it's already late? Mm -hmm. What challenges are there in late diagnosis? Oh, many, many challenges. Probably, let's say, what are the challenges to why women are coming late? Okay. Uh, the first thing is limited awareness. Not a lot of people talk about breast cancer. Um, the stigma associated with it. Everybody believes that once you have a diagnosis of cancer, let alone breast cancer, it means it's, it's a death statement, it. right? Yeah. Uh, the other thing is limited access to healthcare facilities. Yes, Kampala is blessed. We have a few healthcare facilities, but what about the peripheries? Not a lot of healthcare facilities are available that have the capacity or the expertise to detect breast cancer early. Uh, the fourth reason is financial constraints. Not a lot of people are also um, able to come in to Kampala for screening or are able to even have the capacity to start treatment. Breast cancer treatment is not cheap. Mm. Cancer treatment overall is, uh, is, is a burden to a lot of uh, people. And while we talk about financial constraints, we also know that just 1% of the Ugandans are actually insured. So a lot of people, when uh, they are diagnosed with breast cancer, whether curative or palliative, do tend to give up on that because it is heavy on the family. Yeah. And finally, the traditional beliefs, you know, the associated traditional healers, the witchcraft, yeah. before you get into the hospital. That is another reason why um, women tend to come to an actual oncologist or a physician with a mass at an earlier stage. That's so sad. That's absolutely sad. Are there treatments available here in yes. Uganda? Yes. Uh, I'm very confident to say that all treatments, including surgery, chemotherapy, hormonal therapy, radiation therapy, targeted therapy, is available in Kampala, Uganda, as we speak. Yeah. And majority of the hospitals do offer that. So from where I come from, Seeker IHK, we do have that. We have UCI, we have Sambia, and many other public hospitals are also developing um, efforts into making cancer care available for a majority of the population. Okay, so I've heard of a, I don't know if it's a treatment or if it's a checkup, you'll clarify, called a biopsy. Mm -hmm. I would like to know a little bit more of what a biopsy is, but also I want to know, does a biopsy spread cancer? Okay, so when a woman comes up with a mass and we see that on a mammogram and it's suspicious, we actually tell the woman, okay, we are now going to um, lead you or we're going to get a biopsy done on you. A biopsy is a very small procedure that involves an injection. So we anesthetize the area around the breast, we put in an injection, and we remove a couple of cells or a few cells from that Some mass. tissue. Right. And that tissue actually goes to the laboratory pathology, and it's actually read whether we have seen cancer cells or we have seen um, cells that are just an infectious in nature or whether they're normal cells. Now, this is where diagnosis comes. A biopsy ideally would take five to seven working days to be ready, not months. And no, biopsy of the breast does not spread cancer. It's actually diagnostic. Okay. Let's talk about some of the myths um, around breast cancer. You know, we have, we have a very superstitious society, which sometimes takes these things and completely takes them out of context. You've heard of things like witchcraft and whatnot, and these, these are existent within our society. Let's start with some of the myths for cancer. For example, wearing a bra. Let's start there. Does wearing a bra increase prevalence for breast cancer? Wearing a bra at night or wearing a black bra or wearing a bra of any color during the day does not cause breast cancer. Ah. There is no scientific That's evidence <laughs> that suggests that wearing a bra is going to cause cancer. In fact, the Smith came back, was actually given birth in the 1960s and 70s, when one of the doctors actually mentioned that if you wear a bra, then your lymphatic drainage, which is the drainage from the lymph nodes, is actually going to be blocked, causing cancer. Mm. But that's, that's an absolute myth because the lymph node drainage has got nothing to do with breast cancer. Okay, deodorant. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love this question. <laughs> Deodorants and antiperspirants. Yes do not cause breast cancer. There is no scientific evidence that suggests that it does cause breast cancer. So women, please feel free to use the deodorants and the antiperspirants. However, when we tell you to use these things, we tell you that please be careful of the skin around the yeah. breast because we're overall also looking at breast health. But yes, cancer, okay. no. Contraception. Mm -hmm. Great, so when we talk about contraception, we're now looking at the contraception that has estrogen in it. 
So oral contraceptive pills would have estrogen, emergency mm. pills the morning after. Studies have shown that when a woman takes oral contraceptive pills for more than five to 10 years of her lifetime, there is a slight increase in the risk of getting breast cancer. Oh dear. Yeah. However, it is also good to know that back in the days, the oral contraceptive pills had a lot of estrogen in it compared to what we have right now. Yes. But it is always wise to inform your doctor or your gynecologist that just an FYI, I have been using this, it would be good to change it. Okay. Um, does that mean that contraception that's not hormonal or doesn't contain estrogen Correct. is clear? Estrogen is the culprit here. Estrogen, okay. even though we love it because it makes us the women that we are, it's also a carcinogen. Ah, noted. Noted. Keeping money or your phone in your breast pocket. Oh, that's such an uh, East African thing. Uh, a lot of women actually protect the, their phones and money uh, by keeping it inside the breast. No. Keeping phones or money does not cause breast cancer. Okay. Again, we say make sure you don't keep money and phone inside your bra because it's dirty. You don't want to get infections. But other than that, it has no scientific evidence of causing breast cancer. Okay. So let's talk about treatments for breast cancer. We've seen that there have been incidents or cases where people mm -hmm. who do get breast cancer are treated by the breast being cut off. Is this the same for everyone? Is this the standard treatment? Majority of the women in Uganda are actually fear that in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, treatment because yeah. nobody wants to remove to lose their femininity. that organ because you can just imagine a beautiful woman, 35 year old, breast cancer, unable to wear that favorite blouse of hers that shows cleavage and put on that red lipstick because it's a permanent, uh, you know, um, yeah. disability. We actually do call it a mental disability. You've lost yeah. an organ. But when breast cancer is detected early, you don't necessarily have to remove your complete breast. Mm. There are things like uh, breast conserving surgeries, something like a lumpectomy. So just a mass is removed and not the entire breast. So basically early detection can save not just you but can save your breast as well. Correct and these options are actually to be discussed with your doctor in the office. Okay. Be sure to receive all options. Is treatment the same all across the board for everyone? No it's not. There are many many factors to what leads to your personalized treatment. Yeah. Age, the type of cancer you have, the receptors of your cancers you have, the grade of the you know, cancer you have, um, also depends on the patient's preference and quality of life. All of, and the stage of the disease, all of that, when we put in together, we can actually personalize your treatment for you. And I see a lot of people in the clinic telling me, hey, but my neighbor is receiving this. Why am I receiving this? Yeah. Because treatment truly differs from one person to the other. Yes. So yes, treatment is not the same across um, all women. Now, another thing that's very much feared, especially in, in our communities and in our cultures, is the factor of contagion. Is breast cancer contagious? Does me being around someone who has it mm -hmm. result in me having it? Breast cancer is not contagious. And I will repeat this, breast cancer is not contagious. In fact, as caregivers and community members, we have to actually extend an arm towards them, to love them and to make them feel that we're there for them. So yes, please love all cancer survivors. Cancer in general is not contagious. Thank you so much, Dr. Alicia. Thank What's you. your message? to a woman that's watching right now, but most importantly to a man as well, because I've also heard about the occurrence of breast cancer in men. Is that a thing? It's very true. Men can also get breast cancers because men also have breasts. Although the prevalence is lower, um, but they do get breast cancer. And uh, UCI has actually seen a couple of numbers of male breast cancers. And I have seen a few can uh, cases as well. The main thing for a man is that the self-breast exam we talked about, also the same. Treatment is usually also the same. However, when a man comes in for diagnosis, it's mostly uh, at a later stage because the breast tissue is very small. Yeah. So that one centimeter mass can actually infiltrate the tissue compared to a woman that has larger breasts. Mm -hmm. But if I had to give a message to the men and women of Uganda, I would say is first acknowledge it. Breast cancer is real and there is a 32% increase in rise of the number of breast cancers by the end of 2030. Um, once you have acknowledged it and that you know that it's there, please get yourself screened 
and uh, be consistent. Screening is done every year. So if you do it today, please don't forget that you have to be consistent and repeat it. And not just every October. Make this a practice because early detection saves lives. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a very important conversation. Thank you so much, Dr. Alicia. I do have a message coming in, and, and I think it's a little bit of a cheeky message, but if, if, if the person watching needs to know, they need to know. There have been stories and rumors, and this is a myth that you can help us debunk, where they've said men can help women to reduce the occurrence of breast cancer by sucking on the breast. Is that a thing? Or are men just trying to get cheeky and get... <laughs> yes, um, that man is just trying to get cheeky. There you have it. Um, but it's, I've received this question before. Your question is actually the other way around. Can yes. it reduce the risk? Um, but the question is, does a man, uh, when he's on the woman, can that give cancer? So the, the answer is actually no, no. Oh, okay. You're not reducing the risk and you're not giving Increasing cancer. Risk. Uh, as yeah. long as it's consented, then okay. there's no issue. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, the only way a man will help a woman reduce the, their uh, you know, risk, the risk of breast cancer mm. is to take your woman to the hospital and I pay agree. for that package yes. and pay for that mammogram. That's the only thing you can do for her. I completely agree. Thank you so much, Thank Dr. You. Alicia. It's been a very, very important conversation that we've had. I know I have my own questions. I'll probably ask them when we're off uh, air. But if you do have questions, I'm sure we can find you on your platforms, your social media, or at the hospital. Correct. Share your platforms with us, please. Um, on Instagram, my, uh, it's Alicia Adatia, and uh, LinkedIn is the same name as well. And for a hospital, I'm actually based at the Seeker International Hospital of Kampala, Muyenga Barnabas Road, Monday to Fridays. All right. Dr. Alicia Adatia is an oncologist and a palliative care fellow, as well as a cancer pain management expert. And like she said, she's working with Seeker International <laughs> Hospital of Kampala. Thank you so much, Dr. Alicia. Thank you so much for having me. Now, as much as we encourage you to be careful in terms of health, we also encourage you